Hey, hey everybody, Jason here, and I'm back with another quick video for you guys today. I'm out here hanging out in the garage. This is where I keep my Creality CR10. The printer served me really, really well up to this point. I've gotta have like, I would say at least four to 500 hours of printing on it. That's, that's probably a pretty conservative estimate. One of the screws on the bed ended up coming loose, and so one of my most recent prints that was about 60 hours long, right towards the end, like the last 10 or 15 hours, it got some really nasty like oscillations and grooves in it that were pretty nasty. I ended up already fixing it with some Bondo. I just kind of filled it with Bondo, sanded it smooth, and it's really not a big deal. But this really gave me a chance to go over there and fix the printer. And so it's right over here, so we're gonna head over there in just a second, and I'll just let you guys know what we're gonna do. We're basically just gonna pop the bed off, tighten the screws back down, readjust the carriage and the eccentric nut so that everything rides nice and snug, and obviously not binding, but nice and smooth so that there isn't any play or any slop in there and then we'll put it all back together. This is probably, as crazy as it sounds, this is probably a good thing. I'm actually kind of glad that the screw came loose because it kind of forced my hand. I've bought a kit to upgrade the printer with dual lead screws, which I really haven't found the need for just yet. But the thing is, I never put a strain relief on the power wires for the heated bed. I printed it out a long time ago, literally like the day I bought the printer, and I just never put it on. And so what better time to put the strain relief for the heated bed on the one you have to pop this thing loose to snug everything down anyways. So let's head over to the printer. Okay, this is my Creality CR10. You can see I've already printed out the strain relief and the cap, really pretty basic. The bed is, it's jiggling, it's, it's a little bit loose. And so we definitely need to get this fixed. The first thing we'll do is pop off these clips, get the, get the glass off, and then we'll pull everything out loose, put the strain relief on, snug down the carriage and back together. When I first got the printer, this, the carriage was pretty snug, but now you can see that it's loosened up quite a bit. And right here is the, the culprit. This has just come loose, which is, which is no big deal. We just need to snug it down and double check the rest of these. And while we're at it, we're gonna add a little bit of Loctite just to make sure this stuff doesn't come loose again. Okay, I've moved the printer to the edge of the workbench. I'm pretty sure this is a two and a half or a three millimeter Allen wrench. That's an eight millimeter open box wrench, and this is a 10 millimeter thick eccentric nut. The screw actually goes through the eccentric nut, up past the washer, into the lock nut. All you have to do is take your Allen wrench, put it through the bottom, into the actual screw itself, take your eight millimeter wrench, and then just, just snug it, just, just make sure it's snug. If you wanna add Loctite, that's up to you. If you do, I wouldn't go overboard, although these are a pretty decent sized screw, so it shouldn't hurt anything. Once you have that, you need to reach down here and feel the wheel. If the wheel is actually spinning and not grabbing onto the rail, you take your 10 millimeter wrench, you put it right here onto the edge, and you just tweak it just a little bit until you can reach down there and you actually get traction from each wheel. And you'll know because the eccentric nut side has washers on each nut, under each nut. The non-eccentric nut or the non-adjustable side does not have washers. So that's how you'll know which ones you can adjust. And really what you're looking for is for it to have just enough grip to move nice and clean, not have any slop or any play, but you don't want any bind for sure. If you put this thing back together and you start seeing your rear motor start clicking and, 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 and stuff like that, that's probably because you have a little bit more bind in the system than you really want. And it's really just that simple. That's how easy it is to snug the bed up and get this thing back in action. Okay, that's it, it was just that simple. We've got the nuts retightened down. We, 
adjusted the eccentric nuts so that we had a little bit of friction so that the carriage didn't have any slap or any play. We installed the strain relief on the power wires for the heated bed, and now the printer's heated up and gonna get ready to start doing another print. I'm gonna have to take a few seconds and re-level the bed, which I'm sure you already know how to do if you've ever owned any 3D printer that doesn't have auto level, and I'm pretty stoked. Overall, my CR10 has treated me really well. I've already, as I mentioned earlier, I've already purchased the dual Z-axis upgrade, but I just haven't really found the need to install it just yet. I probably will when I get some time, but this printer has actually been working a ton, both personally for little gadgets that I'm working on at home and for some stuff in my business, so I'm really happy with it. Which brings me to another point. 3D printing has really got to the point where a lot of people that are new to 3D printing, they expect the same type of reliability from their 3D printers as you would expect when you went out and bought an inkjet printer from an electronic store, and that just isn't the case. It still takes a little bit of willpower, a little bit of perseverance, and some technical know-how to get a really good result consistently from just about any of these 3D printers. With that said, we're gonna talk a little bit later on in some future videos about ways to kind of increase the reliability, some of the print settings that I found make a big difference, and just just making sure that the beds, the prints stick, especially with some of these prints. Like for instance, on one of these printers like this with a really big bed, a lot of times running your first couple of layers at a taller layer height just creates much better stiction to the bed. I don't know if stiction's a word, but we'll just say that it's a word. And so there's little tips like that. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video just as much as I enjoyed making it, and we will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. I just wanna say thanks again for watching my videos. I really appreciate you guys watching. You'd be doing me a huge favor if you could either like, comment, or even better, subscribe, and you'll be notified when new stuff comes out. I'm all over social media, so if you wanna see stuff that just never makes it to YouTube, add me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, or come say hi on Twitter. Again, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one.